Welcome back. Pro-democracy activist Jimmy Lai's high-stakes trial continues this week in Hong Kong. The 77-year-old faces potential life imprisonment on charges of colluding with foreign forces and sedition under Beijing's national security law. Lai admitted to wanting U.S. sanctions before the national security law was imposed in order to halt the legislation, but denied lobbying for them afterwards. His trial follows the sentencing of 45 pro-democracy activists to up to 10 years in prison. Both the Canadian and European parliaments, in addition to the UN, have called for Lai's release. And joining us now to discuss Jimmy Lai's trial is his son, Sebastian Lai. He joins us now from Australia. Sebastian, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Thanks for having me. Sebastian, I understand you have not been able to see your father in over four years. First of all, tell me what kind of toll has this exacted on you and your family? So, um, because I speak out on, on my father's behalf to, to, to secure his um, to secure his release, I can't go back to Hong Kong because under the national security law, uh, you could get arrested for uh, um, stuff like liking a social media post or wearing the wrong T-shirt. There's now a thousand nine hundred political prisoners in Hong Kong. So, uh, you know, as a result of that, I haven't been back and I haven't seen him. It, it's obviously hard. Uh, you know, it, it's it's. He's been in prison for the last four years. Uh, he's 77, um, and they've kept him in solitary confinement in, 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 you know, frankly, in humane conditions. Um, and, and it's been four years of solitary confinement. So, so the goal is to, to, to break him, obviously. Um, so it's incredibly heartbreaking. And, um, you know, he, as you mentioned before, he needs to be released immediately. Tell me, what was it like uh, hearing your father's testimony these past two weeks after uh, really not knowing what kind of condition he's in for four years? So, so actually, um, it, it was bittersweet because you could see that he was much... His health has gotten much worse, as you can imagine when you kept in a, a, you know, a small little concrete box uh, that could go up to 30, 40 degrees uh, in, in, in the summer uh, um, and, you know, you're, you're all by yourself, you don't get any natural light. Um, but the reason why I say it's bittersweet is because though his body does seem to be breaking, uh, um, you know, his, his, his spirit and his mind is still strong. He's still, you know, he's, he's still fighting. He's, he is unbroken and um you know obviously I, I i i know he knows he's doing the right thing and he has done the right thing so um incredibly proud of him tell me uh your father chose to stay in hong kong and continue to run his media business despite the obvious risks tell us what motivated this decision and how do you think it impacted the pro-democracy movement there so he <clears throat> decided to start a media um a media company 30 years ago that was that then panned into powerful that criticized the government that criticized organized crime uh, and, and and you know felt like the people of hong kong needed a sort of source of truth and with truth had a choice and with choice had freedom and he did that for the last 30 years even though it wasn't an easy road to walk um but but what made him stay after the national security law um even when so many people told him to leave you know told him that he was 73 at the, this point he should retire he should go back to go, go to the uk um, and, and that he would be a better advocate abroad, you know, even if he was decided, even if he did decide to continue that on. Um, he, he, but he, he knew that if he left, um, he'd be opening up his journalists for, um, for persecution. Uh, he knew that he knew that by staying, he could act, act as a lightning rod and stand between the government of Hong Kong and, and, and his journalists and other people who campaign on the shared dream, um, and so, you know, I, I, I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision. He, you know, he could be out enjoying the, you know, whatever time he has remaining. But he decided to stay and 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 protect his people and protect his principles. And um, yeah, it's it's incredibly courageous. And and really speaks to what kind of person he is, uh, Sebastian. Your family has strong ties to Canada. You have uh, your family has property and relatives here. I mean, you, you talked a little bit about the time you spent in Ontario as a child. How do you view Canada's role in advocating for your father and supporting Hong Kong's pro democracy movement? And do you feel like Canada has done enough? Uh, so we've been incredibly grateful by how. Uh, uh, um, 
strong candidate has been on my father's case, uh, you know, including uh, both the uh, House of Representatives and the Senate calling for his uh, immediate and unconditional release and calling it unanimously. Um, truth be told, there's a lot that Canada can do to put pressure on Hong Kong. Hong Kong is trying to tell the rest of the world that um, they still have the rule of law, they still have all these freedoms. Um, Canada has these freedoms and um, you know, how can Hong Kong still claim that they have all these uh, uh, liberties that, that makes it make it into a financial center uh, when they have 1,900 political prisoners, when they send 300 um, police officers uh, to, to, to raid my father's newspapers and then send 500 the next time? Um, it's just, it's, 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 it's a farce. I mean, the Hong, the Hong Kong government is trying to tell a lie and, and, and the, the, the my father's trial and 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 Canada can shine a light on that lie and and, and pressure them to 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 have all these people um, released and um, yeah it, you know as you mentioned we we do have very close ties to Canada in fact I it doesn't sound like it now but I, I learned English in Canada. Uh, you sound very very British and maybe a tiny bit Australian but definitely um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed uh, your time here uh, Sebastian. Thank you so much uh, for your time. I know that this is something that, that's very uh, close to you and very emotional for you. But uh, you, as you said, you speak on your father's behalf uh, during his imprisonment. Thank you for sharing his story with us and, and what your family is going through. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for shining a light on what's happened to my father.